Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I got a really cool product to show you guys, which is water cooling the Raspberry Pi 5 kit. So let's get started. Now I did see this water cooling kit from another channel, which is from Lee PSP video. I'll leave a link down in the description below for that. After I saw his video, I reached out to Pi52 and Seed Studio to see if they could send me the same exact kit. And that's what they did. So here we go. This is the box that we're gonna open. Now, as a disclaimer, the Raspberry Pi 5 is, does not actually need a water cooling kit. The active cooler that comes with the Raspberry Pi 5 is more than enough to actually keep the temperatures down even at an overclock speed of 3.0. But I was more excited about getting this kit because while I am able to water cool the Raspberry Pi 5, this kit is almost like all in one where I could use this for other applications. Like I have a laser cutter that uses CO2. That tube needs water to run through it to keep the laser cool. Having a water cooling kit like this, I could use that for that application or other stuff as well. So I could overclock a GPU using this kit or anything else. So just keep an open mind that, yeah, Yes, while it is possible to overclock the Raspberry Pi 5, this is a little bit more of a novelty, but it's still very functional for other applications. Anyway, let's check out what's in the box. We have the styrofoam. Now this is the water cooling kit itself. I love how it's like all enclosed into this metal case and this does weigh a bit so it won't topple over. Now it comes with two 8 millimeter tube, 8 millimeter internal diameter uh, tubes and power, 12 volt, 2 amps. The kit itself, which is really, really cool. The CPU block for the Raspberry Pi 5. A bunch of um, thermal pads. A filler nozzle. And the bottom plane for the Raspberry Pi to connect the two, plus a huge thermal pad over here as well. And that's about it as for what the box contains. I do like that they inscribed everything on top as well. You can see it says uh, Ice Pump Pi 5, Seed Studio 52 Pi. And this is a 120 millimeter rad and a water pump. And this water pump, I played around with it. That's why you see water in there. It is pretty strong. Now they do have RGB fan on this as well. So you can see this pretty bright and they do have RGB over here as well on the bottom of the pump. Overall, if you needed to mount this somewhere, uh, there are mounting holes on the side. There's a 12 full barrel connector on the side as well, as well as a on and off switch. Now, as far as the pump goes, there's a screw up on top and a screw in front where you could actually fill it in both ways or add to this if you want. Then you have the area where you can stick the tubes in. Otherwise, it's a very simple design compared to what I used to use on my Raspberry Pi 2s and Raspberry Pi 3 for the water cooling, which you guys probably seen is this little setup right over here. I use the Alpha Cool water pump and then a 40 millimeter by 120 millimeter height radiator and a few of the tubing for the CPU block. Obviously, it's been a while since I played around with that and I've retired that for a while already. I do need to flush it because the colored dye in the water practically destroyed a lot of that stuff. So I do need to flush it and get it out of there. That's why on this test, I'm actually not gonna be using colored dye. I'm just gonna be using distilled water just so I could keep reusing this pump for other purposes. And I got a lot of other ideas down the road. So we're gonna be testing this against the Raspberry Pi with the active cooler. Uh, there's no point in testing it without the cooler. So I'm just gonna test it with the cooler at stock speeds and then overclock speeds. And then on the water cooling, I'm just gonna test it on the overclock speeds. So let's jump into it. So here we are on the desktop of the Raspberry Pi. This is a fresh formatted. I did install some programs on here just for uh, stress testing and stuff. We are using the active cooler on stock clock. So here we go. Now this program I just wrote recently, which helps me demonstrate what the temperatures are. So I'm just gonna run this. And I wrote this in Python. And here we go. We are on 2.4 gigahertz right now. And it's running roughly around 30 C. Now, that's not really the idle temperature that it really sticks with because it's just freshly boot and I haven't run this in like a past couple of hours. So I know the idle around with this active cooler is around 40 to 45 or 45 actually. So what I'm going to do right now is just run a stress test CPU and bring the temperatures up and then I'll let it settle back down. And here we go. We're just running CPU burn. And you can see the temperature is going up. It's running at 2.4 gigahertz. It kind of like gets up to the point around like 49 degrees when it's running this CPU burn after a while. And it kind of idles around that at stock speed. So I'm just letting it go up there right now. So you can see it's 45 degrees Celsius right now. It's going to get up to around 49.50 before the fan actually starts kicking in and trying to keep it cool. So right now it's 47. 
And if I want, I'm just gonna jump over to a web browser. Hopefully the CPU burn doesn't kill it because I am using the CPU cores. And I am gonna show you what I was looking at over here. Oh, I don't even have internet connected. Let's fix that. And this is the kit that we are looking at. Now I'll leave a link down in the description below for this and where you could get it. Basically you get over here. And the price of this is actually 120 USD, which honestly, I think it's not a bad price because if you get the pump and just a radiator and a fan and something to power it with, it comes out to roughly around 80 to 90 bucks. That's without the CPU uh, cooler and a few other attachment that comes with this. So for 120 bucks, it's actually a pretty decent price. Now, going back to the cooler, this does have like a whole setup kit on how to do it what pads are for what, uh, how to install everything. And they did run some benchmarks themselves uh, as far as the cooling techniques that they used. So if you really needed the stats, you could have it on the website as well. You see, this 76 over here. And obviously I don't think they have active cooler on this because it does run around 76 if they don't have active cooler. And 35 with their water cooling kit. Now I'm gonna go back into our figure and you can see right now, the active fan just kicked on not too long ago. And I think that's when it hit 50. But that's about it. It doesn't go any higher than around here, 54, 55. And then it'll just hover around here when it's on stock speeds with the active cooler. Now what I'm gonna do now is just close out of the browser, close out of the stress test, and let it idle for about, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. And what's cool about the software that I'm using right now that I wrote, um, it records everything into a CSV file so I could actually just pull it into Excel and then turn it into a graph So you could see it's active right now of what it's recording But I'm gonna be able to pull up a full chart and show you what it looks like So now the fans turned off around 45 degrees and you could see it ch chills around 45 and then goes up to 46 Kicks up a little and then comes back down and it just hovers right around this area For using an active cooler. So now that we have some decent numbers. I'm gonna close out of this and just uh, save the recording and then go into config and then I'm gonna overclock this to three gigahertz. Okay, with everything overclocked, I'm gonna jump right into a quick, quick CPU burn and we'll see what the temperatures are. So right now I'm gonna go into CD uh, Pi temp, which is the program I wrote, hit run. And then I'm gonna go over here and go to CPU burn and run CPU burn a53 and right away you could see the temperatures go up the fans already running now even with it overclocked to three gigahertz it never thermal throttles it always stays around 60 to 65 degrees it never goes past 80 where it starts thermal throttling so the active cooler does a really really good job at keeping the temperatures low so honestly with with or without the water cooling as long as you have the active cooler it does enough work but if you are planning to run maybe 10, 15, I don't know, eight, whatever of these Raspberry Pi 5s, and you don't want to run all the active coolers on each board, you can run and daisy chain a bunch of these water cooling blocks over to one water cooler and probably keep everything even cooler. So here we go around like 65 degrees and the fan's not even loud. That means it's not even at 100%, probably running at like 50% or so. So it's doing a really good job at just keeping the temperature where it's supposed to be using just the active cooler. Now, as you can see, it just hovers right around there, 65, 66, and never ever gets up to 70. And all I'm doing is really just pinning the CPU usage. I think I should be able to have HTOP on here. And you can see, look, it's pinning all four CPUs. Um, it's been going on for the last five minutes, one minute or less than five minutes. And that's about it. I mean, that's all I'm doing really, just pinning the CPU. All right, so I'm gonna get out of this and we're gonna jump right into the water cooling, but we're gonna keep it at three gigahertz. All right, so the first thing we need to do is remove the old active cooler. And I already took off the thumb screws and we have this little blue thing, which I am gonna take a little, let's see if I can remove it this way. And I'll just leave it on here for now. I am planning to reuse the active cooler because that's a really good cooler itself. So now we have a bunch of area that's open. But now we need to add these pads. Now they come with these gray pads that I did not see what we need these for. So I'm thinking it's extra. And they have way too many of these pink pads. I do know they have different sizes for different thicknesses. So I know that certain parts need to go here. So I have extras too. So like this one goes for the CPU and I didn't peel them yet. So it's not gonna stick. This one would go here. Actually, nope, that doesn't. 
This one is the thicker square one, so it would go here. This would go here because they all level out. This, another thick pad, I guess, because, yeah, that levels out like here. And then a thin pad over here. And I'm just going to start peeling them off and sticking them on. And I'm not a huge fan of this part, so I'm just going to do it. All right, there we have it. The one on top so now we are going to actually place this block now if you're wondering if this would work on like a raspberry pi 4 the answer is no because of where the placement of the nick is this will just not work on the raspberry pi 4 as you can see and it will only work on the raspberry pi 5 even this doesn't allow it to install it because of the csi same goes for the raspberry pi 2 or 3 it doesn't fit because of that so this will only work on the raspberry pi 5. now i am going to place this down like so, and kind of get it, or at least try to get it in line with the holes on the bottom. And it actually fits pretty well. So right now it's stuck on, and that's how it looks. And then I'm gonna do the bottom portion of this, which is this big pad over here. Get it right by the SD card and whatever components they are down there. This is a really big thermal pad. And then we'll stick this part on the bottom. And then it comes with a bunch of these screws and, uh, and the Allen key. And there we have it. It's actually installed very well. It's not coming up. It's very sturdy. And it alone, I think this is just having this alone. Wow, it makes it so heavy. <laughs> it's enough to keep it cool without having to use the active cooler. But now all I have to do is just install the hoses on one end and then install the hose on the other end all right so that's how it would look and then now I just have to install it on the cooler itself and that is it basically I have everything all lined up now I'm going to add some water to this run the pump let the air bubbles flow out and then start testing it. All right, so here we go. This is the full water cooling setup of this Raspberry Pi 5, which is really, really cool. And it's so quiet. Like you don't hear the pump, you do hear the fan, but obviously if you place the fan with something more quiet, you could probably reduce that noise, but otherwise it's really, really quiet. All right, so fresh boot, let's jump into it. And we're gonna run Pi Temp and let's see what the temperatures are now. Since it's a fresh boot, it might be really low, like 30s. So we're gonna have to run it up a little bit like before, but wow, you can see it's actually going to 21, 20. And let's pump it up with the CPU burn and let's see where this takes it to. So right now I'm running CPU burn, three gigahertz, water cooling, and it's hovering around 30 degrees. It is ridiculous. All right, 32, it's coming up and down from 30s. It's really ridiculously cool. I'm gonna show you a thermal reading right now just to see how the block looks like when it's being cooled. And I gotta say, I'm extremely impressed with the setup. Right now I've been running for about two minutes or so on the CPU burn and it's still hovering around like 32, 33 degrees. It did bump up a little bit to 34, but still it's not anywhere near 65 like it was before with active cooler. So this does do a huge difference, double the performance of what an active cooler can do. And honestly, I probably could get a little bit more performance out of this if I swapped out the fan or aimed it not in front of an area where you really don't get much air. But it's so cool. Like, everything is just cool to the touch. More impressively, I think this is a complete setup that I could use for a lot of other applications. So I will be doing that. But first, if you want me to test more overclocking on the Raspberry Pi 5 with this setup, let me know down in the comments below. Again, everything we talked about will be linked down in the description below as well so if you want to get yourself a kit but again we can use this kit on mini pcs or anything else even 3d printers if you want to because this is a full i don't know what i would do it on a 3d printer but this is a full water cooling kit which is really cool anyway all in all i'm very impressed is it overkill for a raspberry pi 5 absolutely like i said the active cooler does way more than enough good of a job to keep everything cool even at overclock speed but this just takes it to another notch Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.